Thank you for participating in today's webinar, which is all about Wixel Publisher 10, a version that we've had in beta since early July and that we plan to release by early September. So what's new in Twixel Publisher 10? There are two new main features that I'd like to talk about today. The first one is about empowering your creativity with new options to display cells on the browse grid and new cell style capabilities that we are introducing. The second is about allowing you to offer personalized content through a feature we call advanced scripting. A third feature that we won't discuss today is that we also now, for those customers that are still using legacy issue-based apps, so a traditional kiosk app, they can now have a one-click migration from that issue-based app to an article-based app. So let's look at the new browse grid in Twixel Publisher 10. So here you can see two screenshots and the one on the left is how content items would be rendered in Twixel Publisher 9 or earlier. And on the right you see how these items, these same items, are rendered in Twixel Publisher 10. It's all about auto flow and filling up the gaps. So, if you look at pre-Twixel Publisher 10 rendering, then cells were rendered row by row, and the app will always check whether one row, uh, the app will always check one row and fill it with cells. But if a cell doesn't fit in the current row, then it's moved to the next unused row. So that's why, if you see here, that the green uh, content item two. Um, spans four rows, then the third content item is moved to the fifth row. And so sometimes this could cause gaps and um, it, while there are workarounds, it was sometimes a bit cumbersome to find these workarounds. And so now with Wixel Publisher 10, we are providing much uh, better ways of rendering the content items. So they are being rendered in a mu much more intelligent way. And if cells don't fit in one row, they are evaluated again in the next row and not the next unused row. So that's why you won't have these types of gaps anymore. And you'll be more flexible about the types of cells you put on the grid. So you have much more flexibility and you will also have less work and at the same time, a better result. So this will be a very powerful way of providing beautiful browse pages to introduce your content to your readers. So as you can see here, cells one and two are displayed in the same way as they, they do in a Twixel Publisher 9 app, but the third cell is moved just beneath cell number one, and so there are no gaps. Let's look at the new cell style capabilities now. So we decided to rename cell styles to item styles because actually you are defining a lot more than just the style of the cell itself, but also all the content that is displayed within that cell. And we now provide several template styles that you can start from like one with a title and a bit of text, or just a title, or a title and text and a background image, or uh, an image on the left and text on the right, or the other way around. So you have a couple of these uh, templates that you can choose from, and you just select one of these, and then they remain fully customizable according to your needs. So how do you edit these item styles in your app? Well, if you go to the platform, um, you'll see here you have a three pane view and in the middle is a live preview pane. On the left are the available options that you can select like cell layout, image layer, text layer, etc. And on the right, you have the available parameters for the option you have selected on the left. And you can do this for tablets 
and have a different item style for phones and for the browser client if you want to. So let's look at the different options that we have to define the item style. Well, the first one, the most basic one, is the cell layout, the number of columns and rows that the cell will span on the grid. So in this case, we have defined the cell as spanning two columns and one row, which means that if you're in a four column grid, for instance, it would span 50% of the width of that grid. The second is a table of contents info, so it allows you to easily use placeholders for the title and subtitle. And so there are different placeholders uh, available, so you can obviously use the name of the content item, but also other metadata like title, author, a tagline, or a category. And now also the price, that is if you're working with in-app purchases, it will display the price uh, found in the App Store or in the Google Play Store. So while the metadata information can be added manually when you are adding uh, items to the grid, um, in most cases you will push that content from an external solution and using the API you can populate the metadata fields. A third type of item style is the image layer. And the image layer will define how a cover image for the cell should be positioned within that cell. So it could either be displayed on the left or on the right side, could be the top or the bottom. And you can define a percentage to, to select how, how big the image will be within that cell. And in addition, you can also define how the image itself should be handled in that, um, whether it's going to be scale to fill, aspect fit or aspect fill. So you have these different options available and you'll also see the result in your preview pane. The next item is the text layer. And in your cell, you can define up to two layers of text, and each of those layers can consist of up to five text lines. So again here, you can use the same placeholders I was referring to earlier to um, put these in your text layer. And then the last item style option is the line layer. You can define up to four line layers. And here, the four lines that we have defined are just positioned left, right, um, top and bottom. But obviously these lines can be positioned anywhere within the cell. And you can also select the, the line color. So as you can see, we are now offering a lot of extra capabilities in terms of what you can display within your cells and how easy it is to implement it. So item styles are new in Twixel Publisher 10 and will only work with apps created with Twixel Publisher 10. So if you are using an app based on Twixel Publisher 9, then you will need to go through a migration process. The recommended strategy here is that First of all, you create a duplicate of your existing app. Then you convert the duplicate to a, a Twixel Publisher 10 app. So we don't convert automatically. So it's a manual process that you need to say, OK, I want to convert this app to the Twixel Publisher 10 item styles. And then you can check whether you need to adjust browse grids and item styles. We have tested that uh, about 95% of apps will not require any specific changes, but sometimes a bit of tweaking may be required to have the same result when displaying uh, the app in Twixel Publisher 10 as compared to Twixel Publisher 9. As always, you can check our learning and support portal for details about this migration process.
So let's look at the second major new feature that we are introducing in Twixel Publisher 10, content segmentation using advanced scripting. Well, you may think, what is this all about? Well, basically, it allows you to determine whether a collection or content item is displayed in the app based on certain properties that are available. And so what are, what are these properties? Um, it could be a custom variable that you have defined, or it could be the device language that you're using, or the geolocation, or it could also be a bundle ID. So different properties are available. And how do you define that? Well, you use plain JavaScripting, and so you define a JavaScript on a collection level, and then for that collection and each content item within that collection, the functions in your script will be evaluated. So again, check the documentation here to find sample code for different use cases that will help you get started more easily. So where do you define the advanced scripting? Well, you just go to a collection and edit that collection, and then you have access to the script advanced scripting window, where you can edit the script or paste your script. And you also have links there to the documentation and the API reference. So let's look at the different properties that you can uh, use. Custom variables are things that you can save to the device and reuse later on in your scripts. There are special functions that we provide, such as TWX HTTP that allows you to make requests to external websites, and a second and third one, TWX XML and TWX JSON that allow you to parse XML and JSON data structures. Both of these can often be used in combination with the TWX HTTP module. So sometimes it's better to explain a couple of use cases to get a better understanding of what is now possible using advanced scripting. So a simple one would be to provide a button that displays login or logout depending on the status of the entitlement. So if a user is not logged in, then it will display login. If a user is logged in, then it will display logout. Another one would be to display different content on phones versus the content on tablets versus the browser client. So you can also use the device language if you have a multilingual app to only display collections and contents in that particular language. Or you can use geolocation to only display collections and content items for that particular region. So if we look at use cases specifically using custom variables, one would be that if you require readers to accept a privacy policy, you're able to save that information as a custom variable. Or again, in a, in a multilingual app, you could let the user select a language and then save that as a custom variable. And in the future, when the uh, reader opens the app again, he will only see uh, content items and collections in that particular language. So use cases of using the uh, XML and JSON functions, um, for instance, would allow you to get more information about an entitled user and then filter the content displayed to the reader. So based on the entitlement token, you can issue a request to an entitlement server and then get more info about the user so that you can filter the content based on that information. So your entitlement server will output XML or JSON, and that output will then be parsed by the advanced script. Another use case for this would be serving relevant ads in an app. So you can issue an HTTP request to an ad service, 
and then find out which ads would be valid for that particular reader. So you can use that information uh, appro appropriately. So the ad server will output again XML or JSON, and then that data can be parsed by the script. So how do you add this to your subscription if you want to? So advanced scripting is part of the entitlement pack. So all current customers that have the entitlement pack in their subscription enabled will also automatically have access to advanced scripting in their apps. So let's recap what is Twixel Publisher 10 all about. You've seen the two major new features. The first one about empowering your creativity and allowing you to create beautiful browse pages with the new browse grid rendering options and the new item style capabilities. And the second one being the fact that you are now allowed to offer personalized content to readers using advanced scripting. So just in case you're still using issue-based kiosk type apps, you'll understand that if you haven't already, now is really the time to migrate from that issue-based app to an article-based app. So Twixel Publisher 10 of beta is available now, has been since early July, and the final release is planned for early September. If you have any questions, just drop us an email, sales at twixelmedia.com, or for any documentation or support questions, use our portal at help.twixelmedia.com. So thank you for attending this webinar, and we hope to hear from you soon. All feedback is much appreciated.